Hawks. Our next presenter, Jacob Hoffman, um, Tiger Rattlesnake Ecology in Stone Canyon, Oro Valley, Arizona. Hello, thank you for uh, joining us again. Uh, my project, I have been uh, working on the Tiger Rattlesnake, uh, specifically our study area at Stone Canyon Golf Course and Community, located uh, north of Tucson in Oro Valley. So it is important to understand habitat use of this species and the effects of anthropogenic changes on the diverse desert ecosystem. Uh, the destruction of rattlesnake habitat due to urbanization is a serious threat to this species. And with population on the decline throughout its region, we need to develop maintenance strategies and practices uh, to ensure that this species will thrive in the future. Uh, this project uh, is focused on the study of uh, interactions among the tiger rattlesnake and its environment. It's a highly venomous species uh, found in uh, southwestern United States and northern Mexico, specifically the geographic range down to the south Sonoran region of Mexico. So the project goal, uh, field studies have been utilized to record data on the locations of this species. And uh, we use these measurements to estimate home range sizes, movement characteristics, and habitat selections. Uh, here we are trying to distinguish the difference between males and females, home range sizes, and again, their movement characteristics. Uh, again, the results of this project will give us a better understanding of tiger rattlesnake ecology and its relevant application towards conservation and maintenance of our environment. Uh, talk about the study area a little bit, uh, the methods and materials from the data collection in the field to the analysis done in the lab, results, conclusions, and questions. So this is Stone Canyon. Uh, it is a neighborhood golf course community located against the Tortolita Mountains in Oro Valley. Uh, it's a 1,400 acre region. Uh, it's comprised mostly at the lower portions of desert flats, bare ground, and uh, patches of dense vegetation along the golf course, which is due to water runoff from irrigation. And as the golf course and neighbor neighborhood make its way further northwest, slightly increasing in elevation, uh, increases in uh, desert rocks, or excuse me, dense rocks in the hills and valleys. Elevation ranges from about 2,000 feet to 4,600 feet at the top of the Tortolitas. And there has been a steady increase in development over the years, and this is the main contributor to habitat loss. Uh, so technology has increased our ability to track and locate these animals within their natural environment. Uh, this advancement in technology has led to new methods of analysis being uh, developed to give us more accurate results in their home ranges and their movements. The snakes uh, were implanted with a Holahill Hola SIT2 transmitter following, following the surgical methods of uh, Reinhardt and Kundal. Uh, all procedures of the Institutional Care and Use Committee were followed to ensure that the appropriate care and treatment of these animals was met during the entire research, pro research process. They were tracked using an antenna and the uh, universal transverse Mercator coordinates were recorded using a Garmin GPS unit. So home range is defined as that area transversed by the individual in its normal activities of food gathering, mating, and caring for their young. Two common methods is a minimum convex polygon, which is the smallest polygon without an angle greater than 180 degrees, which is drawn from the outermost locations while encompassing all other points. Some drawbacks of this method is that it tends to overestimate the home range, including areas that were not used. Uh, it also has correlation to the sample size, but it is simple in nature and can be compared between uh, different studies. The kernel density uh, is a method of estimating home range. It's used to calculate a utilization distribution. 
Uh, that is essentially a model of home range that describes the amount of time the snake spends in a particular area. Uh, it's the smallest area within a kernel density that is equal to 95% and 50% probability of use. Here is a map describing uh, 2005. This is males minimum convex polygon home ranges. This isn't everybody for 2005, but for uh, the purpose of not overlapping too much. Here are females in blue for 2005, again. And visually, you can see here that males tend to have larger home ranges described by the minimum convex polygon. And results in my analysis will show a statistically significant result. Here is a map showing the uh, minimum convex polygons in the uh, dotted lines and the kernel densities with the polygons. The larger outside polygons are the 95% and the 50% polygons are within that. And a t-test was used to determine if uh, the MCP area and these two 50%, 95% uh, kernel densities do differ between males and females. Oh, excuse me, here is the females. So again, males, visually you can see that they do tend to have larger home ranges. So uh, snakes move for a variety of reasons, forage, find mates, uh, other things as well. Uh, within this study, we characterize movements as maximum distance moved, total distance moved, mean distance moved per day, which is the total distance divided by the number of days in that annual period, and mean distance moved per track, which is the total distance divided by the number of trackings within that period. Home ranges. So, uh, I, a t-test, independent sample t-test was used to determine if the mean values between males and females are statistically different, testing the null hypothesis of no difference while trying to accept the alternative hypothesis that there is a statistically significant difference between the home range sizes and movement patterns between males and females. And only snakes with 30 plus samples trackings were used in the analysis. So it is necessary to determine habitat requirements and use this information to predict the distribution of a species across the landscape. Uh, this is an essential requirement developing conservation and maintenance strategies. A useful method to determine the validity of use versus availability is a chi-squared test. Ident identifying whether or not the observed distribution differs from the theoretical distribution. Uh, this will test the hypothesis that the tiger rattlesnakes use the habitat in proportion to its availability. I created a land cover map, and these are the eight categories, land covers, um, to help delineate between uh, similar pixel values. I manually digitized the golf course, the cart path, and the uh, houses within that study area. I then converted those digitized features to raster format and reclassified them into distinct values that could be inputted into my final classification, which is here, using the raster calculator tool. Uh, the uh, used a conditional statement allowed me to input these digitized features into my final classification. And here's an example of those conditional statements. So all snakes from 2005 snake locations were used um, to create a minimum convex polygon outlining the boundary that encompassed all other points. Uh, this MCP was then clipped to the particular portion of that land cover and the percent of each land cover was then uh, sampled. And these points were then sampled to identify what specific land cover that they fell upon. These next few slides, I'll be showing the years in which there was a statistically significant difference between males and females. So here is their minimum convex polygon. This is all at the 95% confidence interval. 
uh, for 2003, 2004, 2005, and then when I combined all of the data for over an 11, 12 year period. Um, we reject the null hypothesis and conclude that there is a statistically significant difference between males and females. So the N is the number of individual males, individual females, with 30 plus samples, sample size. Uh, also showing the average of males and females plus or minus the standard error. So for uh, the 95% utilization distribution, uh, it was 2003, 2005, and the combination of all years. Again, rejecting the null hypothesis. 50% utilization distribution was 2004, 2005, and the combination of all years. Maximum distance moved it was only significant in 2005 between males and females. Distance moved per track, which was the total divided by the number of field trackings. Uh, 2003, 2004, 2005, and the combination. Distance moved per day, 2004, 2005, and again the combination. There seemed to be a reoccurring theme. Total distance moved, 2003, 4, 5, 9, and all years. Here is the table describing the chi-square test. Uh, after sampling to 2005 points, uh, these, the points observed there shows how many points, fell, snake locations fell on that particular land cover. The class proportion is describing the uh, amount of land cover within that uh, minimum convex polygon. And uh, after running, we we're able to reject the null hypothesis of equal distribution, revealing that snakes do prefer certain type of land covers, that being uh, vegetation, rocks, and uh, desert flats. So do males and females have different home range sizes and movement patterns during the annual period? Uh, we discovered, I discovered mixed results throughout 2002 to the present. And we want to gain insight again on rattlesnake ecology and its relevant application towards conservation. Uh, we need to uh, educate the public on the differences between real and informed, excuse me, real and perceived threats and when there are perceived threats the right steps need to be taken, such as calling the fire department and having these snakes relocated within their home ranges. We also need to work together with developers at the planning process to ensure that they take into consideration these uh, different ecology aspects, such as providing movement corridors and establishing buffers around preferred habitats, also maintaining low density housing and future research will break these annual periods into more distinct seasonal activities, ingress, egress, from when they come out of their den to when they go back into their den. Any questions?